Hey guys, what's up? It's Debermito. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm here in FL Studio and I'm going to be breaking down Joiner Lucas type beats. Here I've actually got a beat that I already made, but I thought it just fit the style really good, so I figured I would use it for this video. Real quick, guys, before we get into the video, make sure you go over and follow me on Instagram. It's linked in the description. When I reach 2,000 followers, I'm dropping a free MIDI kit, so definitely go follow me so that you can pick that up when it drops. But yeah, starting out with the tempo, these beats are usually going to be in the range of about 120 to 180. So for the melodies on these beats, there's kind of a few different routes you could go you could go with like a really dark kind of evil hard type sounding melody you could also go for like a really sad or like introspective type of melody so usually these beats use a few different types of melodies the first one that you're going to hear a lot is like really dark and hard kind of evil melodies something like zim zima or isis these types of melodies usually use instruments like violins you can also use a lot of pianos synths stuff like that now this is actually the type of melody that i went with myself the second type of melody that you could do is a more introspective and sad type of melody Melody, something like fall slowly or I'm sorry these beats are usually going to use more orchestral instruments so things like lots of strings pianos you can use guitars sometimes but I would kind of shy away from that most of the time for these beats you're also going to hear quite a few samples and the third type of melody that you could do is kind of like a jazzy type of thing again these are going to use a lot of pianos and other orchestral instruments things like trumpets strings stuff like that you're also going to hear a lot of saxophones because it is kind of a jazzy type of sound another thing I've noticed with these melodies is no matter which type of melody you're going for there's usually at least one element that's just super repetitive it's usually just a one or two bar loop that's just repeating throughout the whole thing and with this you're usually going to want to keep it tucked kind of in the back or else it'll get really annoying pretty quickly so let's jump into the beat that i made first we'll start off with this melody i used arcade right here and i went with this green tea preset out of brainwaves it's a note kit then i just laid down these chords right here then i actually ended up rendering out the sample and putting it in edison then i just went to this sample rate right here and I right clicked on that from here you can change the sample rate it's usually I think at 14,000 I brought it down to 8,000 and that kind of gives it more of a vintage vibe it takes out some of the low and the high end and just makes it a little bit warmer and more vintage sounding it also thins it out a little bit which is perfect because this is mostly just a pad sound and so I wanted to keep it set in the background this is what it sounds like So as you can hear, it's very dark and simple. It's a little bit repetitive, not too crazy. It's basically just there as kind of the backbone of the melody to kind of build everything else around. Next, I went with Arcade again, and I used this Overture kit. I just laid out these two little runs right here, and it sounds like this. As you can hear, it's a very dark sound. It's also very repetitive. This is one of the more repetitive elements in this melody. And like I said, when you're going for these harder melodies, sometimes you're gonna wanna use things like violins. So that's what I went for right here. Next, I used a piano and I just made this little counter melody right here. It's pretty simple, really. Sounds like this. So obviously that might be a little bit hard to hear. It is very much just tucked into the back. It's not much of a main element in this beat. For the last part of this melody, I just added a sub bass. Very simple pattern as you can see here. It's just following the root notes. This is what it sounds like. Next, getting into the hi-hats, you're just going to want to use a standard trap type of hi-hat. For your pattern, you're usually going to want to start out with a two-step. From there, you can add some notes or take some out. This is what my pattern sounds like. Next, I just added in a snare sound. Usually these beats are going to use some sort of a trap snare instead of a clap. Clap is a little bit more rare, but you can definitely still go for it if you want to. Next, you're just gonna want an 808. One thing with the 808 is you are gonna want a little bit of distortion on it. Not a ton, but I'd say like medium distortion. For your 808 pattern, you're gonna wanna keep it mostly pretty minimal through here, but then these last two bars, you're usually gonna want it ramp it up a little bit. You can add things like rolls, doubles, jumps, you know, whatever you want to, even slides if you really want it. But besides those two end bars, you want to keep it really simple usually there's not even any notes in the second measure for these songs so this is what this pattern sounds like mm -hmm. 
Then I just wanted to add a kick to give it a little bit more bite. I just mostly copied the 808 pattern onto it, and then I also took out a few notes. This is what it sounds like. And this is pretty much all I added to this beat. Now, if you want to add some perks, you can, but keep in mind, there's not really going to be a lot of them in these beats. Sometimes you'll hear an open hat or a snare or a rim here or there, but for the most part, these beats don't use a ton of those. If you are going to use those though, I would definitely recommend making the patterns fairly repetitive because that's going to fit the style of the beat a little bit more. Do whatever you want though, it's your beat at the end of the day. So next, I'm going to show you guys the mix for this beat. If you guys want to see my mixing process, I'll leave my mixing tutorial up in the card in the corner, but otherwise, let's just jump into it. Keep in mind, that on this pad we did lower the sample rate already then i also added this eq just to cut out some of the lows and get rid of a few harsh frequencies and stuff just kind of shape the sound a little bit then we've also got a reverb turned up the wet a little bit turned up the decay and the size of the room and that's about it but that is a pretty heavy reverb so it definitely lasts a while then i also just came down here and separated it a little bit to make it sound a bit wider then on this violin i've got some reverb right here i just went through presets on this reverb plugin which is free by the way i also have half time and i set it to two bars instead of one bar and I just have this automated to turn on and off throughout the song. Then on the piano we've got some more reverb, again pretty standard stuff, and we've got an EQ just cutting out some of the high end a little bit to set it in the background a little more. Then on the bass I have saturation knob, I turned it down to low setting and I turned the saturation up quite a bit. This adds a lot of bite to the bass and it just makes it a lot harder. We've also got this EQ where I'm cutting out some of the low frequencies. I have this automating to turn on and off throughout the song whenever the 808 comes in so that when the 808 isn't in we can have the sub bass play in fully and when the 808 is in we cut out the lows to make sure that they aren't clashing then when the 808 does come in we can cut out the lows to keep it from getting muddy or from clashing then on the drums i don't actually have any effects and after that we just leveled it now some people have been asking to see what i put on my master i first just got a soft clipper which is on the default setting when you open it up then i've also got a fruity limiter we turned down everything on the envelope and then i just turn the gain up a little bit until i start to hear it clipping and then i back off just a little bit and that's all I do for my master. After that, I just get it to around negative 6 dB to give it a little bit of headroom. If you guys aren't doing that, definitely do because it'll just help your engineer out a lot. It'll give him a lot more headroom to work with and he'll definitely appreciate that. So yeah, guys, down here you can see the halftime automation clip as well as the EQ automation clip. Then I've just got my tag right here. And then at the end, we just faded it out a little bit. But yeah, this is our arrangement right here. So I'm just going to play the beat at the end of the video so you all can hear it. But first, I'd like to thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. Make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, like I said, make sure to go follow me on Instagram to get that free MIDI kit and also subscribe here on YouTube. When I reach 500 subs, I'm dropping a free loop kit. You can also check me out on Patreon if you want to. All my socials are linked in the description, so definitely go check me out. But yeah, that's about it. So thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll talk to you all in the next video. How did the Bermuda make this slap so hard? <laughs>